Women of the Nation, let's pray together. One of the first things that I've discovered, and you'll find it as you're reading through Women of the Nation Pray With Me, is in the introduction, one of the first scriptures that I quote is Galatians 2.20. For I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And why do I use this so much? It's because women feel disqualified, unqualified, uh, not fit to be leading, not fit to be praying. We, we are so bombarded with a lack of self-worth. And we have to attack that with the Word of God. We can't attack it with self-help and, and, and making ourselves more beautiful because eventually we get old. And what we have to do is understand that our beauty and our qualification and who we are comes from the inside. It comes from a God calling on us. For I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And you know what Christ is? He's ever-present. He's ever relevant. He's always knowing who he is. And when we're hidden in him, we should be feeling the same way. What I want you to understand is the enemy is always going to tell you who you're not. But God's word is always going to tell you who you are. So you can't listen to both voices. You're either going to listen to the enemy or you're going to listen to God and what his word says about you. I encourage you, women of the nation, to pray with me and begin to understand who you are. Don't let what's happened to you, don't let your past, you, you are not a sum of all your broken places. If that were the case, now first of all, the list would be very long. I could start from the top, crippled from a car wreck, grew up in Choctaw County, Mississippi, wore flower sack dresses. I could go down the list, been through three windshields with my face, back been broken, left leg crushed in 32 places. Can I keep going? Oh yeah, I can. Cancer four times. Healed of fibromyalgia, connective tissue disease, chronic fatigue, buried my daughter, had crippling arthritis. Okay, I do not want to be equals, Cheryl Salem. No, all these things that happened to me, none of that equals my identity. My identity is in Christ. Once you settle that, you can move forward. Paul said it best in Philippians, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which lie behind. And I love it, Isaiah 43, 18 says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, God says, I'm doing a new thing. How about it, ladies? Can we do a new thing with God? Can we stop allowing our broken places to be the sum total of our identity and be who God called us to be? Will you join me and let's change our nation, our community, our state, our churches, our families, Yes, we can have effect on all of that when we pray together. Chapter 1, let's talk about it. Hopefully you'll start the introduction and not start at chapter 1 and read through it and you're going to find all kinds of stories in there. For instance, when I was uh, five years old, the milkman, Mr. Horton, said one day, little girl, you're going to be Miss America. Those words greatly affected me. Now, 40 years after being Miss America, I could say that man milkman or not, was a prophet in my life. He spoke something that stirred a place inside of me, that put a seed inside of me that wanted to be more than what I was looking at or what I was feeling or what I was living at that moment. I wanted to be all that God created me to be. And I encourage you, every woman watching me, every woman listening to my voice, to be all that God created you to be. Don't let anybody steal who God already put inside of you. You don't have to come up with her. God doesn't have to create something new inside of you. The greatness of God is already inside of you. So chapter 1 starts with these words, Rise and shine. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let's talk about that for a moment. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When you grasp that wonderful identity. The spotlight of God is shining on you. Not me, not your pastor, not your pastor's wife, not the leader of the women's group, not, not the person that, that's hosting this event right now that you're involved in, but you. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. It's risen on you. And God is calling you, woman of the nation, He's calling you to the front lines to take your position and find your voice. There have been all kinds of things that happened, and you'll, you'll read about them in chapter 1. Many things that happened that caused me to want to move forward in this. 
that, that caused me to want to create Women of the Nation Pray together. Part of it was because I was given a revelation through uh, Pastor Mary in New York, and she shared something with me that shook me to the core. Words that were spoken 50 years ago over our nation by a group of women. And in this, the women were trying to find their place, find their position as women. And in so doing, now listen to me, I'm not against anybody, and I'm certainly not against even these women who were deceived 50 years ago and made these statements. But in their statements of trying to find a position, the enemy, the devil used them. And he got them to say a, a phrase, to, to make a statement, a mantra, a liturgy in their meetings. And it was things like this. Why are we here today? To make revolution. What kind of revolution? The cultural revolution. Okay, fine. That sounds fine, doesn't it? How do we do that? By destroying the American family. Wait a minute. That does not sound fine. So what have I done? I've taken the words that they said and I've reversed them and we're going to pray together as women of the nation and reverse the curse unwittingly put on America by women 50 years ago. We women of the nation must find our place. We must stand up and be heard in the court of heaven and make a difference with our prayers. We can obey God and pray together I love um, this translation of Isaiah 60, verse 1 in the original Amplified. It says, Arise, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. So no matter what others have done in the past, no matter what situation or circumstance you find yourself in right now, whether it be the condition of our nation or the condition of your home, we can make a difference. We can arise from the depression. We can arise from the prostration where we're lying flat on our face and see no viable outcome that is good for us. We can arise from that and get a different perspective. We can rise up with God and see from His perspective what He wants us to do. What do I want you to do? I want you to join me and pray. I want you to read chapters 1 and 2 together. I want you to, to understand that God will give you those to stand with you, just like He's given me, my beautiful daughter-in-law, Stephanie, to stand with me. She's a different generation than me. And then He's brought other women now. We are well over a thousand women strong praying together. And that's not just women who have come to a Women of the Nation Summit, because if that were the case, we would have many thousands by now. No, I'm talking about people who actually go to womenofthenation.org and sign up to pray every day with me. Every two weeks you get an email from me with new scriptures and new prayers written out. This is how we pray together. This is how we're unified, praying the same word, praying the same prayers. We're praying to the same God and we're making a difference. God has a plan and it's for us women to join together and pray. It's for us to study and not be worried about numbers. If it was a numbers issue, I could hire media teams, I could hire the, the advertising teams to get the word out and we could have thousands upon 10,000s upon hundreds of thousands of people signed up quickly. But that's not the point. God reminded me in the very beginning of the story of Gideon. When God asked Gideon to go in and make a difference and change his nation and change his world, Gideon said, I, I, I don't think you know who I am. I, I think you called the wrong person. I think you're in the wrong place. You can't possibly mean me. And that's exactly how I felt, and you're probably feeling the same way. What, what good can I do? How can I make a difference? But what God said to Gideon was, I'm with you. When I'm with you, that's all you need. And I want you to hear my voice today. When God is with you, you and God make a majority. When God is with me, God and I, we make a majority. And if those of you who want to join me, join me, awesome. But God's going to do this, and He's going to get the job done. And so I'm asking you to stop being intimidated by a few numbers and just do what God's telling you to do. Be faithful. Be obedient to do what God's telling you. 
What did Gideon do? He began to gather all these people. He wound up with like 32,000 people joined together. And God said, hmm, you got too many. Why? I don't know why. All I know is God said, you got too many. So this is what I asked God in the beginning. I said, God, if you'll give me the number that you gave Gideon to start with, which was 300, God brought 32,000 down to 300. And at 300, God said, now go make a difference. And they began to march 300 strong and they made a difference. I've asked the Lord to help us start and we did. We started with 366 women in our very first summit praying together. Now we are into the thousands and God is moving. We just need you to want to do this with us. I want you to decide I can make a difference in my own life. I don't have to stay depressed. I don't have to stay abused. I don't have to stay broken. I don't have to wear what I've been through as my badge. No, no. You wear the identity of Christ and keep moving forward. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that it will grow as we stay obedient. That becomes numbers, that becomes power, that becomes anointing. God says that He's going to grow you as you stay faithful. He's going to grow you in every aspect of your life, in every reality of your vision. And you may say, I don't even have a vision yet. That's okay. As you read Women of the Nation chapter 1, you're going to get a vision for what God wants you to do. I believe that. Then you get over into chapter 2, and this is talking about being strategic. God gave me a plan. Be strategic. Be organized. Be unified. Chapter 2 is being strategic. It starts with awake and ready. You see, I don't believe God calls any of us to do anything until we're ready. And He certainly doesn't ask us to move forward until we become awake. Awake to His voice. Learning to listen. And understanding that God never shouts. He whispers. He has a still small voice. And that means you have to set aside time to be with him. If you're a young mom, that might be three minutes. But you know what? God knows the life that you're living right now. He knows the, the stage that you're in, the phase of life that you're in, the season. He understands if you have three minutes and he'll speak to you. Maybe you can carve out 10 or 30 or maybe you're joining us women of the nation and you're praying for the moments that you have what I encourage you to do is, is don't say I can't do anything just print out the prayers that we send print out the the, the words that God gives you keep a, a little three by five note cards in your Bible and when you find a verse write it out and stick it where you spend your life if that is in the kitchen Put it on the refrigerator. If that's in front of the mirror in the bathroom and, and you have five minutes to put your makeup on in the morning, stick that little three by five card right on the mirror so that you can be meditating on that one verse while you get ready for the day. Or if you spend a lot of time changing diapers, stick it on the changing table. Wherever you can spend the moment just glancing at the scripture and praying the prayers, God knows the season you're in. Don't disqualify yourself because you're in your 20s or your teens or your 90s. God is waiting for your voice to be heard. Let's be awake and let's be ready to do what God has called us to do. And don't forget, He knows who you are. He knows where you are. First, we're strategic. That means we're not afraid to be the woman God's created us to be right now. Then we're organized. We pray together. We are coming together right now in these times and we're reading Women of the Nation Pray Together and we're praying together. So don't forget, go to womenofthenation.org and sign up to pray with me. And every prayer that I've sent out already in an email is on that website. You can download every one. I encourage you to do that. Print them out and put them in a three ring binder so that you can quickly Find the prayers that you need to pray and be organized in your prayer time. Yes, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? You see, when you decide to join God and do what He tells you to do, when you decide that you're just going to obey His voice and become strategic, to be awake, to be ready, to do what God's called you to do. Don't start disqualifying yourself before you ever start. 
He knows your situation. He knows your circumstance. Don't be self-focused. Don't, don't be self-praising. Don't be applause-seeking, self-promoting. Don't be approval-seeking. God is searching for people that will just say yes to Him. You don't need the applause of people. You don't need the approval of man. All you have to do is say yes to God, and you can do what He's called you to do. Again, I remind you, He knows your situation. So, in closing with our little time together today, I want to take you through an exercise that I found helps women. In Matthew 6, 6, God says, But you, when you pray, Go into your room, and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, what does that one verse mean to you? There are so many women that I know who love God with all their heart, but their life and their lifestyle and maybe even their personality uh, keeps them from coming into the secret place. Maybe you say, I don't have enough time. It takes me too long to shut down everything. I'm going to show you an exercise that the Holy Spirit has shown me. I am that type A Martha personality. I am, as I call myself, a recovering Martha, longing to be Mary at his feet. But typically, with my personality, I'm Martha in the kitchen, wanting to go through the details. Lay down at night, can't shut my mind off. Have the hardest time being with God. Sit down in my prayer chair with my Bible and my book, and then my mind is on the dryer going off. And, oh, I didn't start the washer. And, oh, my goodness, I can hear the kids. And You've got to stop all that just for a moment. Just for a moment. Don't worry about an hour or two hours or 30 minutes. Let's just get through one moment. But you, when you pray, go into your most private room and shut your door. So let's do that for a moment. Let's spend the time. You can do it even after this video is over. But I'm just going to show you how I learned to do this. What do I do? I understand that God wouldn't have put that verse in there if he didn't want me to do it. And secondly, he wouldn't have put a verse in there that was disqualifying to me, that, oh, my personality can't do it. Only the Marys can enter the secret place. No, everyone can. Martha's and Mary's can sit at his feet. So let's do it together. So what do you do? Sit down, close your eyes, and begin to visualize right in front of you. Don't look with your eyes, look with your spirit. See a threshold right in front of you. Now, in your spirit, step over it. Reach behind you and shut the door you just came through. You're in the secret place and you're with the Father. He has waited for you for so long. All the time you thought that you were waiting for Him, He's been waiting for you. You shut that door you just walked through. Now, Let's walk the perimeter. Keep your eyes closed. Walk the perimeter. Use your spirit eyes. Do you know in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve didn't even have any natural eyes? They didn't need them. Until they sinned, their eyes were not even opened. Why? Because they had perfect spirit vision. They didn't need natural eyes. So keep your natural eyes shut and re-learn to use your original eyesight, your spirit. Walk the perimeter of this secret room with God. Walk all the way around. Your room might be round. It might have 20 sides. It might have four sides. It might have just a circular. But whatever it is, just keep walking. And if you see another door open, just shut it. If it pops back open, shut it again and keep moving all the way around the room until you've shut every door. Once you've circled the room and all the doors are shut, turn toward the center of the room and see the one who's been waiting for you all of your life just to be with you. Just see him. Begin to draw near to him. Do you see his arms, his hands? Can you see his feet? 
He's sitting on a throne waiting for you, his child, to be with him. Don't worry about an agenda. Don't worry about what you can do or what shall I say or what am I going to pray. It's not about prayer right now. It's about being with him. You can pray when you learn how to be. Just keep coming. Look up. Can you see his face? What do you want to do now? Do you want to crawl up in his lap and lay your head on his chest? Do that. You want to wrap your arms around his feet and just lay at his feet and rest? Do that. Do you want to dance for him? Do that. Do you want to dance with him? See his outstretched arm. Whatever it is you feel, be with the one who loves you more than you can ever imagine. Once you have figured out how to be in the secret place with him, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Do you not know it? You see, you didn't have to go into heaven to find him. You're the temple. He lives inside of you, and that's how close he is, waiting for you. After you have finished this time, maybe you want to jot down what you saw, what you experienced. Maybe even take a look at yourself. How old are you when you're with him? What are you wearing? Write it all down, for you have just had an encounter in the secret place with the Most High God who adores you, who wants to be your father and wants to call you daughter. Corinthians says, so come out from among them and be separate and I will be your father and you will be my daughter. You've just had your father-daughter experience in the secret place. Enjoy your time. I hope you enjoyed reading chapters 1 and 2. If you've not read them yet, you can read them now. I'll see you next time.